Fred here, welcome back to the Gear Obsession channel. In this episode, I'm going to show you the brand new, just born, Ramp of Truth. Stay tuned. Before we get started, I'd like to go ahead and just show you how this works and what it's really supposed to be doing. The question I've been asked many, many times is, do you have some sort of way of being able to test the slipperiness of different lubricants that you test? Because I already test them for protection on the plate of truth. I also um, put them in another type of plate of truth into an oven and see how well they hold up to heat. I also have a box of truth and that's for just uh, shooting through stuff. So now I have the ramp of truth. I was going to call it the slider truth, but somebody recommended the ramp of truth, so whatever. So the way that the, well, the whole premise to this thing is to have a piece of metal, which I may look like this. Almost looks like a belt buckle. I'm going to call it the shuttle. And also I have a track here that's also metal and these side pieces are also metal so it's surrounded by metal so it's metal on metal sliding down a predetermined angle ramp and I'll go ahead and do a dry test with no lubricant on the bottom of this and the slide and then I'll go ahead and test um, lubricant applied to the bottom of the shuttle and the ramp so let me show you how this whole thing works I have a timer down here and the part that stops and starts the timer, the button, is facing upwards here right against this piece of wood. So when that, when this shuttle comes down, it's going to come down and hit this ramp that presses the button that will cut the timer off. So if, it, if this timer were running like it is, and this comes down, it will come down and go ahead and turn it off. And then for the next test, I can go ahead and reset and do it again. Now, the big problem I was having and why it took so long for me to come out with this, this ramp of truth was to find a way that I can release the shuttle here on the top and start the timer in an instant. Exactly the same because I know there are people out there on YouTube where if I didn't have this kind of thing set up, they would say, oh, you're releasing this faster than you're pressing the button or you're pressing the button before you're releasing it. I don't even want to go there. I don't want to start. So what I did was I have a piece of quarter round that runs all the way up. So this quarter round, like if I press it here on the top, you'll hear the timer go off. See? So it basically just pushes this on and off. Now I have a, a lever here. So that'll press the top of this quarter round. You can hear it. And it cuts it off. And at the same time, when I pull this lever, it actuates or releases this clip right up here. You can see this clip. So what happens is I'm going to clip in the scuttle so it's pressing down and holding it from sliding. When I pull this lever, it's going to do two things. It's going to release the shuttle and it's going to press this cord around that's going to start the timer. So let's go ahead and do a dry test here. Okay, so here's the bottom, and again, here's the timer, so I could hit the, the reset there. So when that guy comes down, it comes down, hits, what will happen is we'll start it when it gets released, and I'll do that. This comes down, and we'll cut it off just like that. It'll hit. I got a piece of rubber here, so it really will push the end of this lever harder because without this piece of rubber the piece was sitting here and sometimes it wouldn't um, get enough force to turn it off so that's why I got a little piece here and I got a little rubber piece here to sort of keep the uh, bouncing because what was happening was it was uh, doing a lot of bouncing so this see there there was a lot of testing going on this this took almost a month to perfect so let's uh, so here's the quarter round it goes all the way up here so you can see how that hits right there and you can also see how it pushes that lever up that releases the shuttle so this uh, just goes under like that so just to show you how this works you can see how it's going to press it and presses that quarter round it releases the 
raises the clip to release the, the shuttle. Get a, a bird's eye view of what this whole thing will look like. We'll go ahead and release. You're probably not going to be able to see the timer, but we'll go ahead and do a release. And I have um, 1.31 seconds. We'll go ahead and reset it, do it one more time. One point three four seconds, so it's pretty consistent. A couple hundredths of a second off, which uh, it's pretty impressive. It's getting that close. That's a uh, one point two eight, so not too bad. So what I'll probably be doing is I'll do a dry test before I do test any lubricant on this thing, and I'll probably run it down about three or four times, get a average. So I can, you know, it, it's going to vary. There's nothing I can do about it. So I'll do a whole bunch, like three or four, get an average. Then I'll go ahead and apply a lubricant to the bottom of this end to the whole ramp. And do about three or four and get an average of that. Then I'm going to have to wipe this whole thing down, probably with something like Simple Green, a really good degreaser. Scrub it, get it really dry, and then put the next lubricant on it. <laughs> and do the same thing, run run it down three or four times. And uh, I'm going to play with it and try to figure it all out. There's still a couple of small little little teeny kinks to work out of this. It's not perfect. I have a couple of little things, but I wanted to let you know that I didn't forget. It is working on it. It's about 95% done. Just some little teeny tweaking, and then I'll be able to start. Now, what could happen is... It's dry. I'm getting one and a half seconds basically out of this thing. And then I pry the lubricant and it's worse. <laughs> it's slower or it's about the same and I can't tell any difference. And then this would have been just a, a test of ignorance, I guess, you know. And uh, all I could do is take my best shot at um, trying to do this. And if it doesn't work, then it's just a lessons learned. And maybe someone out there can put together something better. There is a device out there to test uh, lubricants, but it's expensive and you try to build one's expensive. It's basically you have a wheel, a piece of metal in a wheel, and then you have a weight with a, a lever. Or it's not a weight, it's another plate that comes down. And what you do is you lubricate it as that thing's spinning and you press down on the thing until it finally will stop. And it'll give you a readout of how many pounds of pressure it took to get that spinning motor thing to stop and you could apply different lubricants on it um, I don't have the money the resources and, and stuff to do something like that so this is my best shot at trying to do it if anybody out there thinks they could build up build a better mouse trap has the resources and the money um, don't sit here and criticize me please just uh, go ahead and and put it on your channel and do it please um, this is what I came up with um, there were a lot of people who commented and recommended something like this. So, here it is. So, um, hopefully it all works out good and, and we could get some really good um, data. And we could go ahead and act, you know, how, hopefully it's going to provide us a method to reliably test which stuff is slipperier than others. It's, I'm pretty sure it's going to end up very, very close if it works at all. But at least it's it's something, and uh, it it just will enhance the information that we could put out there on YouTube. We already know um, some of the oils out there that provide the best protection, and I noticed that there's a lot of other videos out there where people have started doing it too. They started testing it. I just got done watching a video where someone was using a an old brake rotor and testing frog lube against uh, nothing at all, and 10w40 or something like that and frog lube did an outstanding job so it's it's good to see that um, I'm seeing similar results from other people's tests and they're doing it a little bit differently which is good um, this is not a laboratory <laughs> and it's by no means a a, a uh, controlled test you know so the more people that we have do these kind of things the more we can go ahead and QA these products to see who's uh, talking them up just a little too much and who actually um, 
is telling the truth and providing a really good product and living up to everything and living up to the expectations of what they're saying. All right, let's uh, end this. It's getting too long. I'm really tired. <laughs> and um, uh, I, I'd say I, it, it's just a bad day. So thank you very much for joining me here at the Gear Obsession channel. I really appreciate every friend user user see every friend viewer subscriber yeah i want to the reason why i say user <coughs> excuse me is because i i have user accounts at work and i'm still in system administrator mode so i apologize for that so again appreciate every friend viewer and subscriber and you and i hope you have a great evening and i will see you friday